Hello and welcome to St. Peter and Zion Lutheran Churches. Today we celebrate the first Sunday in Advent. The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday in Advent, is from Jeremiah chapter 33. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. And our epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. What thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnestly night and day, that we may see you face to face, and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself, and our Lord Jesus, direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts, blameless and holiness before our God and Father, and the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. This is the word of the Lord. In the Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. When Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, in which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, you shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For we live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This day is the first Sunday in Advent. Most people who have been members of congregations who follow the church here know that Advent comes from a Latin word that means to come. Specifically, Advent is about the three ways God comes to us. He came in the manger. He will come again at the end of the times. He reveals himself to us now as we hear his words and participate in his sacraments. One of the many themes of the Bible is God's deep desire to come and dwell with us. The last book in most Bibles is the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. This book expresses the ultimate goal of God's 
plan of salvation with these words. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. When God led the children of Israel out of slavery of Egypt to the slopes of Mount Sinai, he expressed his plans for Israel by saying, I will dwell among the people of Israel and will be their God. Then there is the account of the angel appearing to Joseph in a dream in order to tell him that the child of Mary was of the Holy Spirit. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Matthew noted that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So we see that one of the names of our Savior expresses this desire of God to be with us. Even the Lord's Prayer expresses the idea of God coming to be with us in the second petition. Thy kingdom come. Prayer is talking with God, and the best prayers take God's own words and pray them back to Him. Our prayer in the second petition is a reflection of God's expressed desire to dwell with us. There is only one problem with this. We are no longer the innocent people that God created on the sixth day. Our ancient parents ate of the forbidden fruit. They allowed sin and death to enter the world. God's presence changed from a presence of joy to a presence of fear. Shortly after God created Adam and Eve, He came to dwell with them, and they were terrified. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Later on, Adam explained the desire to hide. He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. God came to dwell with his people, and they were afraid of him. They were afraid because they knew they deserved punishment in God's holy presence. That brings us to the reading for today. Today's reading is about God coming to us in a way that deals with the fear that we sinners leave and have in the presence of the Holy and Almighty God. It teaches us that the coming of God is about Jesus entering Jerusalem in order to sacrifice himself for us. Eventually, it is about Jesus coming to keep his appointment with the cross. It's about Jesus coming to offer himself to take away all of our sins. It is about Jesus coming to Jerusalem to pay the price that makes it possible, once again, for God to dwell with us in joy instead of terror. We need this re reminder at this time of year because the world hopes to camouflage the coming of God to a manger and tinsel and lights and Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Decorations have already been up in the stores for months. Santa Claus and Rudolph and Frosty stand ready to draw our eyes away from the manger. And even when we dwell on the manger, the world does all it can to illuminate the knowledge that that cute little baby will grow up to decorate a cross with his own body. We need this reading to remind us that God came in an act of generosity that transcends all other acts of generosity. An act of generosity that we can never even measure. So we listen to the account of God coming to Jerusalem. Only God is hidden in a man, Jesus the Christ. He is lowly, riding on a donkey. He hides his glory so that those who give him praise will not flee and tear. He hides his glory so that mere mortal men will actually have the arrogance to plan his death. 
He is the fullness of God in human form. So that God can die on a cross and restore the joy of the original creation. He comes to die so that he can dwell with us in love. The angels will get it right on Christmas Eve. Before he is even circumcised and given the name Jesus, they will proclaim that he is Christ, the Lord. Christ means Messiah, the Anointed One. Already they know that the little one who lies in twaddling cloths is the Lord of all creation, who is anointed for death, even death on the cross. Perhaps we could also find some help in an ancient tradition reserved by our brothers in the Eastern Church. They did not refer to this time of year as Advent. Instead, they referred to it using the term Nativity Fast or even Nativity Lent. Such terms would help remind us that Advent is a time in the church when we consider our sin and our need for a Savior. This is a time when we try to walk in the shoes of those to sorrow for their sin and eagerly look for the coming of Messiah to save them. If we truly wish to put Christ back in Christmas, we must recover Advent. Advent is a season of preparation, not simply of our homes, meals, and presents, but a time of preparation for our hearts, a time of assessment and acknowledgement and a time to recognize why our Lord came in the first place. A time to recognize why that infant child, born to be king, would one day receive a crowd of thorns. A time for repentance. Advent prepares us for Christmas by telling us why the Son of God needed to take on our humanity as a single cell to woo with the Virgin. Why he had to experience the pain of childbirth. Why he chose to be born into poverty. We state the reason the Son of God submitted to all these very time we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The Son of God had to become the Son of Man in order to save us from our sin. It is our sin that placed Jesus in a manger just as much as it was our sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. Mary's miracle pregnancy and Christ's birth were but the beginning steps of the road to that cross. Today's gospel is the beginning of the climax the first coming, the covenant of God to his people in order to save them from their sins. On the Friday after he entered Jerusalem on the donkey, he died on the cross for the forgiveness of all sin. He died, but he did not remain in the grave. One week after Jesus entered Jerusalem, he rose from the dead. With his resurrection, Jesus opened up the way to eternal life. This promise of eternal life leads us to his coming at the end of time, his coming in the clouds with glory. When he comes, he will gather together all those who believe in him and take them to live with him forever. This is the climax of his last coming. In the meantime, Jesus still comes to us. He comes when we hear the word. He comes as those who are baptized confess their sins, and receive the very forgiveness that Jesus earned for us with his death on the cross. He comes to us at the altar as we eat his body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of sins. As Jesus comes to us, he brings heaven with him, but where Jesus is, there is heaven. The Holy Spirit prepares us for all three comings by creating and sustaining faith in us. By that faith, we believe in the one who gave himself 
for us on the cross. By that faith, we receive the benefits of his coming to us now in his word. By that faith, we look forward to the day when we shall see Jesus face to face in heaven. Our Redeemer comes. He came and is coming. He sends the Holy Spirit to prepare us for his coming. Jesus says, Surely I am coming soon. And we reply, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the name of Christ Jesus, Amen. The peace of God just pass all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For unashamed hope in the Lord's return, that's sustained by his Holy Spirit. We may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that the Lord of hosts, who sent his Son to endure his just wrath in our place on the cross, with blessed proclamation of his word, and preserve us in baptismal grace, so that the Lord Jesus Christ is always our righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who hear the word, that the Lord have moved Jesus' disciples to sing his praises as he entered Jerusalem, would likewise open our mouths to declare his mighty works, even in the face of opposition and persecution. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who govern, that the Lord who rules with righteousness and justice, steadfast love and faithfulness, would grant the authorities of our land to act justly, so that his people might live in peace, as they make known his love and faithfulness. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For those in need of mercy, the God who establishes our hearts blameless and holy before himself would have mercy on all those afflicted, and that he would comfort all who mourn until the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints in glory. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel, that our Almighty God and Father would direct their ways, protect and preserve them from loss and complication, and grant them success in the journey and joy in their homecoming. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Holy God, you declared that the days were coming when you would accomplish our salvation, and in your time you caused your son, the righteous branch, to spring up for David. By your grace, keep us joined as branches to Christ that we might bear fruit until the day he returns in glory, for lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.